you both say you support commercial wind, what would your administration do differently to get more projects commissioned? You know, Brian, I'd like to come back to this because I've heard you go from just a year ago saying win, win, build it everywhere, uh, to a permit process that it seems to me ensures we won't build wind. And when I read your permit plan where you want to expand at 248 to win, I read it like this. You want to take away citizen participation when Walmart wants to build, and you want to add citizen participation when we build wind. This is what I would do about wind. We need wind. I understand the sacrifice. If you want to talk about energy sacrifice, come on down to Winter County. I'll show you around. So let's talk about how we get it done. First, I would do as governor is put together the smartest minds in Vermont. It would take us about six weeks. Let's figure out all the areas of Vermont that are so precious that we would never put wind in. Let's take them off the map. Second, let's use Green Mountain Power on a Lowell project as the way to get it done. The community that hosts it votes affirmatively, it comes. Community votes, no, it doesn't. Third, a tax structure where the closer you win, live to the turbines, the more benefit you get. And finally, let's have a decommissioning fund in place as we do now to take it down. But unlike the Vermont Yankee example, let's actually fill it up before we build. Those four things, we have a bright wind future as part of our energy mix. Uh, I think the single biggest question that I was asked to ask the two of you today deals with transportation. With the average Vermonter driving more than 12,000 miles a year, 40% uh, of Vermont's greenhouse gas emissions come from vehicles. In addition, the population is aging. So the question is, what would you do, what would your administration do to reduce the number of miles that Vermonters drive, and what would you do to increase the options available for Vermonters to get around? And we'll start with uh, Lieutenant Governor Duke. Well, I can tell you one thing I would do, first of all, is I'd work to build more park and rides. I mean, that's a really low technology solution to encourage carpooling and car sharing and, and public transportation. And uh, when we, I know there's uh, park and rides that, that aren't adequate now. It seemed like a really simple, easy first step that could help encourage carpooling. Now, that's something I would do. Uh, investments in our, our, our rails. Uh, is another area where um, I think we have great opportunities as a result of the era funding. I'm convinced that we're going to electrically powered cars. I want Vermont to be the first place in the country where if you have a plug-in, you can plug her in. Let's get that done. Second, ride share, tremendously important, huge potential. We know we live at the end of Dort Rose like myself. You're not going to get a bus up there. Let's get much more aggressive about ride share, community-based people helping each other to get there. I think those two, three, two, two areas have a real potential to help us reduce our emissions. I just want to back up, Mark, to the uh, comment just made. There is a choice in this election, and Brian's correct. His plan goes with cutting 9% from the budget next year, which we both agree we've got to do, but then he level funds the next three years to a 2% growth rate so that he can give a quarter of a million dollar tax breaks frankly, to the 1,400 Vermonters like myself who make $373,000 a year or more. That's not what I'm going to do as governor. Vermont's biggest problem is not people like me paying their income taxes, frankly, the 1,400 of us that have run successful businesses here. I think rest areas matter. I think Dr. Dinosaur matters. I think services to our low-income residents matter. I think getting the middle-class benefits matters. That would be my priority, though it's a choice. We can do it if we don't give the wealthiest Vermonters, George W. Bush style, the trickle-down tax cuts to try and help them out. I can help myself. Uh, I want to say something about the future, though, because people in this room are investing in the future, but you're not making enough right now to make a go of it in many cases. I see a really bright future for our renewable portfolio. Really bright. I think a lot of money is going to be made. If I were where I was when I started my business, I wouldn't have done student travel. I'd be with you in renewable. You're going to do really well. I'm going to help you get there. I think that small community-based power is where we're going. I also think, this is my judgment as a business person, and governors have to make judgments, that the future price of oil, because we've reached peak oil, suggests that what is 
seems not exactly competitive right now, will be competitive soon. Oil's going up. I guarantee you that. It's a finite resource. Chinese, the Indians are building cars as fast as they used to build bicycles. Bright future. Let's do it together. Vermont can lead. We'll export our knowledge and our manufacturing to other states, and we'll all have a very bright future together. Right now, we charge Vermont Yankee and Louisiana a generation tax for every kilowatt that they generate. When it shuts down in 2012, that tax is gone. As governor, I'm going to implement a high-level nuclear waste storage tax. It seems fair to me that any community in any state that's going to take high-level nuclear waste and store it in their state should be reimbursed by the company or the federal government, they can take their pick. That's not my problem. It's really important that we do that. So I will, and we'll use that money to ensure, some of that money, to ensure that the fund stays strong and helps us subsidize further renewable projects so that we can meet the promise that I've outlined of being the renewable energy state. First one up, first one to win. Lieutenant Governor, would you support a storage tax? Uh, for money. Consistent with our ability under the law, I would aggressively pursue any possibility to, to get compensated for the right to store uh, spent waste on the banks of the Connecticut River. Uh, before I make a promise about something like that, I would have to uh, make sure that is a possibility, um, but I certainly would um, explore all possible options to make sure that we could continue to fund the Clean Energy Development Fund. I don't want to go to Washington. That would be my idea of, frankly, something hot where I don't want to go. <laughs> I no longer think that my usefulness in the Senate is a good idea. It's time for change. I want to serve four to six years, if you let me as your governor, so that we can actually seize the moment. Take an opportunity to lead the country. This is a time where America needs Vermont. This is a time where if we play our cards right, we can harvest the economic opportunities that lie before us, put Vermonters back to work, have extraordinary resources in a bright ag future, a grow local market, ensuring that grow local includes everything within 200 miles of it. Bright ag for the future. We can set the infrastructure to get it done. A healthcare system that leads the country in containing costs and treating health care as a right and not a privilege, containing costs for our businesses, ensuring that we go to renewables faster than the rest and do efficiency right, ensuring that we have the best schools and the best educated workforce in the country. That's my vision. If you elect me, we will do big, bold things together. I would love to have your vote your support, your grassroots help. It's going to be a close one. We need you. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to once again thank, thank uh, you all, uh, VNRC, Vermont, uh, uh, Renewable Energy Vermont, for hosting this debate. <laughs> it's been a very enjoyable debate. I look forward to continuing our conversation. we got six down, seven to go. Uh, I will say, uh, issues of public safety are very important issues. My campaign is about growing opportunities for Vermonters. Our taxes have an implication. The cost of power has an implication. The, the permitting climate has an implication for you if you're trying to put wind turbines on a ridge line or if you're trying to create new opportunities in an industrial park. I think we have a great state. I think working together we can create more opportunities for our state. The fact is we have the highest property taxes in the country. That's why I put forth solutions. The fact is, we have the highest property taxes in the country. That's why I put forth solutions.
The fact is we have the highest property taxes in the country. That's why I put forth solutions to address that. Our regulations are too onerous. People in this room know that. People in this room love our state. People in this room can work together so that we don't spend time in court and fighting one another, that we work together to create solutions and opportunities for the next generation. That's my spirit. That's what I've tried to do as your Lieutenant Governor. That's what my commitment would be as your next Governor. The solutions are in the middle. That's where I work best. Listening to people in this room, it would, would be my privilege to serve you as your next Governor. I do appreciate the opportunity to talk about these very important issues. I look forward to the next seven debates. Senator, thank you very much. Thank you very much.